Hello, I'm Ash, and I have a theory for you today about the one and only road warrior Mad Max, who came around in 2015 to be reinvigorated for Fury Road. He came from a franchise in 1980 that was three movies strong, directed by George Miller. And it was a risky move to bring it back to modern audiences, but one that paid off in spectacular fashion. Mad Max has always been a visual experience as much as a movie, with the commercial appeal of a high-speed chase film combined with some very bizarre Miller-esque world building. Even so, it never loses sight of a wider message amongst all of the pole ramming, car vaulting, fire spouting craziness. It's in this way that a theory can be drawn out from Mad Max's universe. What if, in this display of world ending violence, there's actually a representation of a mythological event? What if, in this world where there's Valhalla and war boys, there's a stronger religion at play? What if Mad Max heralding the end of the world and being one of the sole survivors is actually a representation of him being one of the horsemen of the apocalypse? Floating around the internet not long after the film's release, fans have long speculated the connotations between the biblical horsemen and Mad Max, as well as his three adversaries, Immortan Joe, the People Eater, and the Bullet Farmer. For some background into the horsemen themselves, the four are said to represent the beginning of the end of the world and the coming of the apocalypse, with each one representing war, disease, famine, and death. Appearing in the New Testament of the Bible, the horsemen are said to come when humanity has little hope for a future left, though in Mad Max, instead of horsemen, we get car men or people who are riding these metal structures instead of horses. Starting with the bullet farmer then, it's easy enough to draw connotations between the red horse of war and this guy who has a monopoly on the weapons of the wasteland. The man thrives on conflict and violence and relishes the opportunity to be involved with it. He's depicted as a crazed warmonger, the owner of weapons in the wasteland called upon for aid in taking down Max and Furiosa. As the Red Horseman represents not just war, but non-righteous violence, the Bullet Farmer follows suit, exampled in a scene where he's firing at Furiosa without any thought of the other complications of his actions. When Max and the wives are stuck in the bog, his rage knows no bounds when it comes to inflicting pain, refusing to back down even when he might be taking out the women rather than just Max. He actively pursues opportunities to incite violence, even though those around him are telling him it's not such a good idea. Punished by losing his sight, the bullet farmer then takes on new levels of unbridled aggression, screeching out his infamous call to arms. I am the scales of justice. I am the conductor of the choir of death. Sing, brother heckler. Sing, brother Koch. Sing, brothers. Sing. Sing. Interestingly enough, he has almost unlimited bullets that get fired into the guys, whereas they have to count every one that gets fired off. Maybe that's another representation of something a little more supernatural at play. As why would a horseman of war not have as much weaponry at his disposal as anyone else? He's the guy who's there to kill and maim and do loads of bad stuff, so he's not gonna run out of bullets really, is he? <laughs> as for the people eater then, his gluttonous appearance might seem the opposite of famine, but surely one that brings all this hunger in his wake isn't necessarily going to be malnourished himself. He's a consumer, an indulger, a devourer, earning his quite literal name through cannibalism attributed to his unstoppable need to eat. Nothing is grotesque enough to stop him. The name The People Eater also works when related back to famine itself, as when we start to starve from not eating or are malnourished, our body starts to consume the fat already lining our system. It's a quite literal name where famine is the people eater. It eats people. The White Horseman is Immortan Joe. Just like the main adversary of Fury Road, our White Horseman is one that has many different interpretations and representations, depending on whose perspective we're looking through at the time. Primarily seen as pestilence, Joe's rancid appearance reflects this ideal perfectly, with rotted flesh replaced with machinery and an illness he desperately tries to keep under control. Those that are a part of his following, whether willingly or not, are covered in sores from radiation sickness and generally aren't in very good condition, apart from our lead characters that defy him. In this sense, it could be argued that those under his control are succumbing to the pestilence. The White Horseman is also said to represent conquest. If we look at his settlement in the wasteland, as well as his hoarding of the water and control of the supply, it's definitely true that he can be seen in this way. Interestingly, the last interpretation of the White Horseman is as something wholly good, such as the coming of Christ, for example, or as something wholly bad, and that would be the opposite, the coming of the Antichrist. It just really depends on who's seeing him at the time, I guess, but you can argue this for a Morton Joe too. 
Obviously, he is our lead villain, so we can see how he'd be the coming of the Antichrist and the controller and dominator of all these people in the wasteland. But also, with his control of the water and actually giving a home to these people and feeding and look after them, someone with radiation sickness who's a bit burnt and crazy is going to see him as a generally really good guy. The way that the war boys treat him as uh, someone who can offer their gateway to Valhalla is obviously a religious figure, such as that of Christ. So what about the last horseman then? The pale horseman, or the representation of death, can actually be applied to Mad Max himself. And yes, whilst he is our good guy and seems to leave things better than he finds them and helps people and is really wholesome and nice, he also leaves a wave of death and destruction everywhere he goes. Just look at the events of Fury Road and tell me that he doesn't leave waves of perished people everywhere he travels. Max is also inherently unkillable. Surviving all sorts of ludicrous situations as well as remaining relatively normal despite radiation being everywhere, he's as much a force of nature as the power of death itself. The fact that he's an O negative blood donor and gives himself to save people in the wasteland also is very important. He has the power over life as much as he has the power over death, something that death itself is the only person that can lay claim to. He can choose who to save quite literally. By the end of the film then, the bullet farmer, the people eater and Immortan Joe have died, but Mad Max remains, just as death is inescapable and again inherently unkillable. War, pestilence, famine and all those sorts of horrible things aren't integral to our way of life. Yes, they're horrible and they are representing this coming of the apocalypse, but death is the only thing that is a literal force of nature. The death of the three horsemen could also be symbolic through their lack of senses. Joe has no mouth, representing the lies he spouts to his followers. The farmer has no eyes, for being blind to the violence he inflicts. And the eater has no nose, meaning as much as he consumes, he will never taste it, leading him to keep on going forever. All three refuse to listen to anybody else, so that could be representative of a lack of hearing. So you could argue that there's a whole see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil theme going along with these sorts of things. Why is that important as a final thought? Well, Max as death would be the judgment across these people. So that is how Mad Max can be seen as a horseman of the apocalypse as well as his adversaries. It's an interesting theory, but I just need to know what you think in the comments section below. Do you think that it's good? bad? Do you think it could be seen as that? True? False? You tell me. If there's any other theories that you think are interesting, please drop those in the comments section below and we will look at them as always. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye!